Good morning, everyone, on this third Sunday in Advent. My name is Elaine Wing, and I'm blessed to be the pastor of Calvary United Methodist Church here in Dumont and Church of the Good Shepherd in Bergenfield, New Jersey. Due to the surge of coronavirus transmission in our state and the demands of the holiday season on our staff and volunteers, we have decided to combine our worship services and offer only virtual worship for the time being. Throughout Advent and Christmas, we will record in both sanctuaries and in the homes of both members of both churches. We also enjoy gifts of music ministry teams from both churches. We are richly blessed by time and talent of many dedicated church members and volunteers. Before we move forward with our opening prayer led by Karen Ravensbergen, the lay leader here at Calvary UMC, I encourage you to write these two dates and times on your calendar. Monday, December 20th at 7 p.m., when our special Blue Christmas service will premiere on both churches' YouTube channels. And Thursday, December 24th at 7 p.m., for our Christmas Eve service. Blue Christmas is a special service dedicated to receiving God's promise of hope, even when we are feeling blue or sad due to a multitude of reasons. The service is filled with hope, and hope-filled music and powerful words. The message is, come as you are. No need to pretend to be jolly. Just come as you are and receive God's comforting love. Karen? Good morning. Would you be in a spirit of prayer with me? Today we continue our Advent worship series I believe even when, through music, prayer, scripture, and sermon, we will hear words of comfort, challenge, and good news. Again, be with me in a spirit of prayer. Holy Spirit, please open our minds and our hearts as we worship you today. We want to be your messengers of joy and encouragement in these difficult times. Quiet our busy minds and help us to listen to your word. Grant us a calm oasis in the craziness of this time and season. This we pray in the strength and joy of your son Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite my husband, Neil, to come on up. He is going to uh, share with me the lighting of the Advent candle for this Sunday. Holy One, today we light the candles of hope, love, and joy. We thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, ignite the flame of joy within us that we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Amen.
Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today, this Sunday, where we're going to learn the third verse of the song This Little Light of Mine by Sign Language. Now the lyrics go like this, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. So the way we're going to do that is taking your hand like this and we're going to hide it under like this. A bushel, we're going to make a plant and we're going to go, no. So hide it, we're going to hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So now let's try that with music. Thank you everyone for joining us by singing, by signing. I feel more joy already. When we add more music and more light to the world, we increase the joy in the world. Sometimes we get tired or sad, and when this happens, music can uplift us. It can spark a light in our eyes once again. So let's pray a repeat after me prayer. Thank you, God, for giving us light and for giving us music, help our hands dance and our hearts sing to spread more joy in the world. Amen. I'd like to introduce to you our scripture video from Isaiah's text. The prophet Isaiah speaks of rebuilding in our video. The long and arduous work to remove barriers from my people's road is not unlike the reconstruction that you and I must do in our nation and our world around entrenched roads of injustice. Isaiah's message is not only the challenge to do the work, but also to tend to the hearts that have been crushed by oppression and hardship. It will be said, survey, survey, build a road, remove barriers from my people's road, the one who is high and lifted up, who lives forever, whose name is holy, says, I live on high in holiness, and also with the crushed and the lowly, reviving the spirit of the lowly, reviving the heart of those who have been crushed. I won't always accuse, nor will I be enraged forever. It is my own doing that their spirit is exhausted. I gave them breath, I was enraged about their illegal prophets. 
I struck them. In rage, I withdrew from them. Yet they went on wandering wherever they wanted. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and reward them with comfort. I will create the reason for praise, utter prosperity to those far and near, and I will heal them, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to say a few words before we hear the anthem video, We Resist. Each week in this series, we present a song or a video that speaks to how music pierces the darkest moments of our lives with the light of Christ. Today, we present a rallying call, much like the Song of Mary, which you will hear in our gospel reading. Mary lifts her voice and says that God will show mercy and lift the lowly. We resist calls for us to resist the injustices of the world at the same time we pray for our enemies, welcome the stranger, and show love to our neighbors. We resist, we refuse to let hatred in. We rise up, we won't back down. We're in this till the end. We resist, we refuse to let hatred in. We rise up, we won't back down. We're in this till the end. We resist, pray for we your enemies to let the stranger. Show up back now, we're in this till the end. Pray for your enemies, welcome the stranger. Show love to your neighbor, we're in this till the end. Tanya and Andrew Zimmerman are presenting a paraphrased version of our gospel reading from Luke 1, 26 through 56. Among the disciples, Luke is the journalist, and this is the longest book of the four gospels. Luke details the events of Jesus' birth as an important way of helping us understand who Jesus really is. It's also Luke's way of helping the non-Jews of the time get the facts, the real facts, and not the rumors, so that they can understand Jesus' saving grace and presence in their own lives. Tanya and Andrew? Our reading is paraphrased from Luke 1, 26 through 55. <clears throat> when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to the village of Nazareth, there he found Mary, a virgin, who was engaged to a man named Joseph. The angel said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Mary asked the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The Holy Spirit will come over you. The child will be holy and called God's Son. 
nothing is impossible for God. Even in her old age, your cousin Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Mary got up and hurried to her cousin's house. Elizabeth said, Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Elizabeth, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord and rejoice in God as my Savior. He has looked with favor on me, a servant girl. From now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because God has done great things for me. He shows mercy to everyone who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, just as he promised to our ancestors. May the word of God be a blessing to our lives. Have you ever asked yourself, who are you envious of? Is it someone who doesn't have to worry about paying their bills? Someone who has a healthy and vibrant relationship with their spouse, their family, and their friends? A person whose purpose and meaning in life is crystal clear? Or someone whose health is uncompromised? For me, it is none of those options. If I'm going to be envious of a person, my envy is wrapped around the person who is filled with a deep joy despite life's circumstances and their self-awareness of their imperfections. The good news is that each of us can be that person. You see, joy doesn't wait for life struggles to be over before we can experience it. Advent is a season of preparation and anticipation for the coming of the Christ child. The child who is Emmanuel, God with us. God who is present in the personal challenges and mundane moments of our lives. God who is with us in the collective moments when we join together as our brother and sister's keeper. A cartoonist once successfully divided the entire human race into two types with one illustrating, uh, telling illustration. The cartoon pictured two women at a well. Each has a bucket from which they will draw water. One woman looking sad and bitter remarks, life is terrible. Every time I fill this bucket up, it is empty within minutes. The other woman who appears at peace within herself replies, I think life is wonderful. Every time this bucket is empty, I can simply fill it up again. In the Book of Joy, authored by Archbishop Dismond Tutu and the Dalai Lama, we learned that one of the pillars of joy they identified was perspective. The key to perspective is remembering our bucket is perpetually filled by the presence of Christ in our lives. We can return to the well of God's love and joy and draw from it all we want every time we want. We can draw for the strength of conviction and centeredness as God's beloved children. In the Hebrew writings of the Old Testament, we find text that clearly states that the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the New Testament, we are given an even greater gift. Jesus, the Christ child, came so that our joy might be full. In John 15, 10 through 11, Jesus announces, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be complete in you and your joy may be complete. 
These words are said by a man who knew that his life would include persecution and death on the cross. Our Lord's life is a reminder of persecution and hardship which comes in many forms within our lives. Each time we're knocked down by a wave of hardship or guilt or shame, our faith can also take a hit. So it takes what we call gutsy joy to see the steady stream of God's love filling up our bucket when we dip into the well of life-giving water. One of the greatest examples of gutsy joy, the kind I could be envious of, is Robert Louis Stevenson. He was devastatingly ill from childhood and in pain almost every day of his adult life. In the closing days of his life, Stevenson wrote this prayer. We thank thee for this place in which we dwell, for the love that unites us, for the peace accorded to us this day, for the hope with which we can expect tomorrow, for the health, the work, the food, and the bright skies that make our lives delightful. Give us courage, gaiety, and quiet mind. That was written in 1912. I spoke at the beginning of how guilt and shame can rob us of joy. There is an old story about a little boy visiting his grandparents on their farm. He was given a slingshot to play with out in the woods. He practiced for hours, but he couldn't hit the target. Discouraged, he headed back to the farmhouse. Along the way, he saw his grandma's pet duck. On an impulse, he took aim with a slingshot and he hit the duck square in the head and he killed it. In a panic, he hid the duck in the woodpile, not knowing that his sister Sally had seen everything that had taken place. After lunch the next day, Grandma asked Sally to wash the dishes. Sally said, Grandma, Johnny told me he wanted to help in the kitchen. Then Sally whispered in her brother's ear, remember the duck. So Johnny did the dishes. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores and his sister Sally's, he couldn't stand it any longer. He confessed to his grandma that he had killed the duck. Grandma knelt down beside Johnny and said, sweetheart, I know. I was standing at the window and I saw the whole thing. Because I love you, I forgave you. I've just been wondering how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. Hardship, guilt, shame. All can rob us from experiencing the joy that accompanies a vibrant relationship with Jesus as our Lord and Savior. The decision to continually refill our bucket from God's well of life-giving water is up to each of us. What choice will you make today? Larry Crabb wrote these words worth remembering. Brokenness is realizing Jesus is all we have. Hope is realizing Jesus is all we need. Joy is realizing Jesus is all we want. Amen and amen. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Let us begin with a brief time of silence. Lord of all, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation, we praise your holy name. Your blessings rain down upon us without ceasing. We have so much to be grateful for. You are the creator and sustainer of all that breathes and lives beyond what the human eye can see. We pray with confidence that through Christ, you hear us. Father, Mother God, we turn to you today with concerns that preoccupy our heart and mind. Some of us are heavy laden with sorrow or worry over situations we cannot control. We may be grieving the loss of loved ones, even though we know they are now safely with you. We ask that all who are in need of your healing touch experience your presence in a tangible way. Come to us as the angels did to Mary and Joseph. 
granting us guidance for decisions we must make. Waking or sleeping, may we remember we are covered with your protection. Give us the courage to step forward into the unknown as your servants. Lord, many of us are weary from the constant strife in our world. Help us to focus on your word as our North Star, the light that illumines your goodness. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ whose very lives depend upon decisions made elsewhere. Give them some sense of justice and dignity. Let us who are the church of your word, Jesus the Christ, join with them in their plight, uniting to bring about a new day. Enlarge our world to include them in the decisions we make. Help us to raise our voices in a rallying call of resistance. Make us more sensitive to the truth that how we live determines whether others survive. God of mercy, we ask for your forgiveness for the repeated times we have sinned against you. Our choice of words or actions or the decisions to not stand up for you publicly are all failures on our part. We humbly ask you to help us change our hearts and embolden our behavior in a way that brings glory to your name. Keep us from delaying until a more convenient time the practices that will make us stronger disciples. Surround us with those who have made a similar commitment so we may encourage each other in our faith. Bring us closer, O God, to the time when the way of love shall be recognized as your way. May the joy of serving you be the desire of our heart. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. The Lord's Prayer. Now let our voices offer as one the prayer Jesus taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you now to, with me, offer our gifts to God, either uh, electronically going to the website of either Cheat Church, as you see the information on the screen, or using the postal service and sending your check through the mail. We appreciate your gifts at this difficult time. We know that many of us are stretched. And so we really appreciate your giving so that God's ministries through both Good Shepherd and Calvary may continue and really have a positive transformative impact on the lives of people that we are helping. Let's join together in the unison prayer of dedication. All we have is from you, O God. All that we enjoy is the rich bounty of your love poured out on us. In Christ, we have witnessed your care. In Christ, we have learned to share. In joy, we worship you with our gifts and present ourselves for your blessing. Send your spirit once more to empower our service. In Christ's name, amen.
Let us receive our benediction. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, like the bells ringing out the news that God is with us, Emmanuel, let us choose to counter sadness with messages of joy. So go into your lives humming the tunes that keep joy alive in you, that spur you on, that spur you on in the work of justice and reconciliation for all of God's people on earth. Amen. And go in peace.